all right, have a new project. I'm going to work on a new feature documentary. Uh, my mom, who's produced all my feature films with me, we just like went to the drawing board literally and thought up this really complicated, uh, philosophical, heady, cerebral documentary that we, I guess, were starting pre-production on in that month in September. And then uh, October rolls around, October 8th, and my husband and I find out we're pregnant. And it was, you know, so joyous and everything. Spoiler, not pregnant now. Uh, so what ended up happening was uh, I had a month of just pregnancy bliss. I was so happy. Uh, so I found out I was pregnant at four weeks. And uh, so five weeks ago, I'm, I'm making the nursery already, decluttering. Uh, you know, six weeks, I'm getting my first prenatal appointment. And um, I, you know, I'm just totally starry eyed and so excited and, and end up telling my family so that we can start planning the new documentary around me being pregnant. Uh, seven weeks comes around, I'm realizing that I'm probably not going to be doing uh, the travel that I had planned because I was going to be speaking at a a conference in Ohio about campus equality, and I was going to be right at like the nine week mark of my pregnancy, which apparently is when your symptoms are really horrible. Uh, so throwing up nausea and you know fatigue and everything, and I was already experiencing a lot of really bad symptoms. And then, um, and then around the seven week mark, uh, I'm going to get graphic if you don't mind. That's okay. Uh, so, you know, I start spotting mm -hmm. and some, some women who are pregnant, that's just what they experience and it's no big deal. But I told my doctors and they brought me in for my first ultrasound. And, uh, you know, I was pretty far along by that point And they all they could see was a gestational sac. They hadn't seen the yolk sac yet, which is going to show where the baby would grow. And uh, they're like, okay, well, we we need to figure out where your baby's growing right now because we don't see it in your uterus. Um, but your HCG levels, which is your hormone, uh, your pregnancy hormone, is high enough where we should be seeing it by now. So this could be alarming. It could be in your fallopian tube, which is potentially life-threatening because if it grows in your fallopian tube, this is called ectopic pregnancy. It could rupture, you could die, uh, definitely lose your fallopian tube. Um, so they, they put me on, you know, high-risk pregnancy watch. And um, then I kept going to my new ultrasounds. My HCG levels kept rising. They, they still couldn't figure out where the baby was. Uh, by the time when we should have been hearing the heartbeat, we weren't, and um, and it just became basically a month of uh, just tons of doctor's appointments, two ER visits from pain and uh, not knowing where the pregnancy was and knowing that that could be life-threatening, and uh, tons of ultrasounds and tons of blood work, which was my least favorite thing of all of it. And uh, it just became about a month of these doctor's visits and, you know, panic and sadness and grief. And, and because I'm a documentarian, I knew I wanted to document my pregnancy. And I started documenting it right when we found out and I was telling my family and, you know, so all the good stuff, all the happy memories were documented. And so when I started the process of miscarrying, um, I just kept documenting. So I, long story short, I, um, my miscarriage happened between eight and 12 weeks. So it was that long. It took that long to finally, for my body to naturally, um, purge the, the pregnancy and just it's basically like a home birthing experience, mm. which is really shocking. I, see, all this stuff I never knew because I just never asked those kind of questions or met anyone who had, had a miscarriage. And I'm 32 years old, and I, I didn't expect that I would be high risk for that. Um, you're not just automatically high risk for being 32 years old, but it, your risk does increase as you age. And uh, so 
all this, even just the happy pregnancy part was a learning experience for me. So then to learn about the miscarriage part was really eye-opening and really scary. And, you know, my heart just goes out to, oh my God, every single woman that has pregnancy loss, like at different stages too. Um, so I, ever since mine, I've, I've been fairly open with people I know, uh, one-on-one -on -one talking about what happened because it's just, it's a part of me. It, it definitely affected me and, and, you know, it happened. Uh, but this is my first time sharing it on camera. So thanks for being an open ear. Um, so I, I've learned that it's actually really common for all doctor confirmed pregnancies, one in five end in miscarriage. And so to have a doctor confirmed pregnancy, you're already, you know, have your first prenatal appointment and you're pretty far along. So there are tons of more miscarriages that happen before you even know you're pregnant or, but, but I think when you're trying to conceive, you're wanting the family, you're wanting the baby and you're going through, you know, all the steps to, to make the baby as healthy and happy as possible. And, you know, I quit coffee and which is like the hardest thing for me because I don't want to, I know, I know there's conflicting information about that, but, uh, you know, I just didn't want to do anything to hurt my baby. And so I quit coffee, which was the hardest, like, you know, drug withdrawal kind of, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then it just, you know, eating better and your, your health and also, you know, canceling work because my symptoms were really bad. And I don't know if I had a nine to five Monday through Friday, I don't know how I could have been at work for that time, for that whole, not even from just the physical trauma, which was intense, but the emotional, uh, you know, I was, I was out of civilization for that month dealing with all this and, mm. and you're just paralyzed in, in your own grief. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.